Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Monique and I'm on a financial health journey to create an inheritance for the generations to come. I want to do that through consistency and discipline and I want to straighten up my camera too. And I don't want y'all to see my coffee. All righty. I like to thank everybody who's liked or commented on any of my videos and especially those that have chosen to subscribe to my channel. Truly started this as a way to hold myself accountable, but I understand, recognize, and appreciate the community as a whole. So if you're rocking with me on this journey, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't made up your mind yet, sit with me for a spell. At the end of this video, if it's content you find valuable or enjoyable, please feel free to subscribe. It's myself and Sweets, married with a whole bunch of kids, figuring out our future, our family, and our finances. So the decisions we're making now won't negatively impact our babies in the future. We are here today on Thursday the 15th to work through a uh, budget closeout for, for what? August the 9th through August the 15th. So today's the 15th. We're closing it out on the 15th. Um, this binder, overall the shell of the pages, belongs to baddies and budgets, but I have been incorporating some Etsy templates that I found. Um, just trying to find the best balance for me. Um, not necessarily for sweeties, not as concerned about the forms that I use and seeing budget versus actual, etc. This really is all about me and just trying to find something that feels the best for me. With that said, I'm going to give a shout out to someone who's probably never going to see this video. And that is uh, Ashley Digital Studios. I'm going to adjust this camera a little bit more. Ashley Digital uh, Studios where she's showing on one of her um, videos how to use Keynote to build your own digital planner. And I may be going that route. I think maybe my problem is less about these paper sheets because this isn't necessarily how I budget, but more about that digital planner view and how that doesn't look the way that I want it to from a budget perspective, like trying to use somebody else's template to fit my stuff in. So I think I'm going to use that um, video to try and build my own um, digital forms and or digital sheets and I'll let you guys know how that progresses. All right, so I am going to come in a little bit and we're going to talk through what this budget looks like. Now, I will share with you in this binder. I, I bought this binder from Amazon and then I bought these tabs from Amazon and this is how the tabs lay out. This first tab has my overall um, sheets which deal with our subscriptions that we have, and then as well as that the debt payment tracker, which I haven't talked about yet, but we'll talk about that um, at some point. Um, the next tab covers anything that's current. So the current month view and what that looks like is here, as well as the current week that I'm working on. Not only the weekly budget, but how I plan as far as the groceries are concerned for that week, the cash envelope breakdown for my cash stuffing for that week, and then my weekly check-in sheet this sheet is actually covers a five week period. So this travels um, for in each week in that particular month before I finally archive it or retire it. So we're in week two right now for this one, as well as it, the spending tracker for, the, for that. Now you probably saw this spending tracker if you saw my cash unstuffing video. So all of that is in this, this second, behind the second tab. The third tab is how I'm planning for the next week, the week to come, okay? So um, second tab is for the current week and current month view. Third tab is for the next week that I'm planning. Fourth tab is for any of my um, templates and the setup. So when I get ready to move forward to transition this to using for that next week in preparation, it already has the budget sheet there. It has the grocery sheet there. It has the cash planning sheet there. And it has the spending tracker all together. Then I'll just rip that out and then move it uh, forward as I need to. So um, the next tab is where I keep all of my old ones. So we're gonna talk through the budget plan for this week. And then once we talk through all of this stuff for this week, I'm literally gonna take all of this out, this whole section. In fact, I'm gonna take this off for the spending tracker. I'm literally gonna take this whole thing out. I'm gonna move it back here to the back where all of my other copies are. I am going to take this next week that I'm working on, move it here. And then I'm going to take a set of blank sheets and move them here for that next week. <laughs> so that's how I just keep, it's like a train. It just keeps moving and keeps uh, moving on. So there you go. 
All right, I'm gonna scooch in now. And let's look at where we are for the budget. Hey, you gonna let me come in? Did it? Yeah, it's been acting a little wonky today, y'all. All right, so I think I'm there. I've already done all of the numbers though. There's nothing else that we have to really mark off or do, so we'll talk about it. And I'm gonna move this back. It's a lot of adjusting I'm having to do, but it's all good. All right. So let's go up here to the top and let's look at the income. So for the income, um, everything came in as expected. $1,500 in the bills account, $800 in the variable account. $50 was rolled over in, from the bills account. So it's in there. So total in the bills account that I'm going to budget is $1,550. There was $400 that I planned for um, my bonus, my mini bonus. And that came into the variable account. So I thought $1,200, but... I saved $100 in my savings challenge for extra debt. I went ahead and um, notated that here because I wanted to go ahead and make that payment to the city card immediately. And I needed to account for it here. It was gonna throw the numbers off. So I couldn't put it here and not put it here to make sure that these things align. So that's why you have that listed there. So instead of having $2,750 for income we are going to budget, it's going to be $2,850. It's in blue because remember, blue is the bomb. Pink is a problem. Okay. Next in my bills section, everything came out as expected. So the way that I do it, I have the budgeted amount. I have the actual amount that I pay. And then I highlight it in green once it actually clears from my bank. So everything has cleared and come in as expected until you get here. Water was $2 cheaper. That's why you have it in blue. It was $23 instead of $25. It is not highlighted in green because it has not cleared the account. I just got the statement and they're supposed to take it out today. So um, so that's why it's not highlighted. Xerxes Groom was a little bit more than I expected. You know, we had to change. Well, not change. We are using the same place, but Lily, his groomer isn't there anymore. So he has a new groomer. She cut some really low, but she charges a little bit more plus the tip. So that came in at $55, which is why it was in pink instead of 50. And that has cleared. And then trash actually cleared as well. So when you look at the totals, I budgeted $476, but I actually spent $480. That's why it's in pink because it was $4 more. When you look at the savings amount, all of that came in as expected. That's why you just have that green line going down. I contributed exactly what I thought there. For expenses, I contributed exactly what I thought there as well. And that's why this number is, is the same, consistent, $320. And then for the debt. So I did make an extra debt payment to the city card. My Discover is, is really sweet Discover card. And I'm just giving him $100 or paid $100 to cover the cost of a TV that I wanted. I'd already given him some money. I was just, I'm just finishing that up. So it is not a credit card bill that's due. Basically, I just wanted the TV I wanted and I made him pay for it. And so I'm giving him some of that money back. All right. Kohl's, you see $100 here, but you will see Kohl's again because their payment is due on the 19th and it's $90 and I'm still going to make that. This $100 was the stuff that we bought in preparation for my daughter's senior portrait setting. I got the money out of her sinking fund, but I did use my Kohl's card because there was a 30% discount there. So that's what you see here. And then Rooms to Go, um, their payment is due on the 20th, but I did... And that reminds me, this Kohl's thing reminds me because I have Kohl's cash and then I need to make sure I use because of these um, purchases that I make and I don't, I, hey, that's free money. I'm going to go ahead and use that. In fact, I'll use it for my daughter um, friend Ramona's birthday. I think that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, sorry about that. I was off track for a minute. <laughs> okay, so Rooms to Go is due on the 20th. It's $92. I went ahead and paid 100 when I got paid on the 9th because it is a manual payment. It is not an auto draft and I wanted to make sure I didn't forget it. So total budget for debt was 300, but I actually paid 400 when you add in that um, extra debt payment that I made to the city card. So when you look at all of the final numbers, 2850 was the income, 480 taken out for bills, 320 for expenses, 462 for savings, 400 for debt and then that left a rollover of $1,188. It's a little bit cheaper, $4 cheaper, 
or four dollars less than what I budgeted and that's probably accounted for here um, but that's okay we are still doing good so I took that number one thousand one hundred and eighty eight dollars and I rolled it over into the next week budget so I've already gotten that written in while I'm working on that all right Next, we have grocery and blah, blah, blah. that didn't work out as well as I thought. This was a cash, cash envelope plan that I had for last week. So we're done on that. And then here are my weekly check-in numbers. So I'm going to come out a little bit. Well, not that much. Uh, come on. Sorry, y'all. Y'all looking at my fingers and everything else. All right. I think that's good. Maybe. We'll see. All right. So... These should be the amounts that I am dealing with here. So we're just going to go in and check and make sure. So for groceries, I had $27 left over. I budgeted $110 and I counted and I should have $23 left. And if so, $10, $15, $20, one, two, three. The way that I come up with that uh, number is that that number of 114 there in the middle is that I do the 27, which is rollover. I add what I put in there and I take away what I still have, which is 23, which means, means I spent $114. And I did that going all the way down. So groceries has $23 left. All righty. Next is gas. Gas should have 17. No, 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 no. 20, 30, 40, 45, 46, 47. It's 47. I knew that was too low. But my numbers should still be the same because I did the number. Mm -hmm. Let's see. 48 plus 30 minus 47 equals, yeah, 31 that I spent. I don't know what I was thinking. So that's what that should say, $47. Okay. I think I was copying that 17 for home and wasn't paying attention to the road that I was on. Okay. And it's a good thing I'm checking. 17, 10, 15, 16, 17. That's $17 on that one. So it was 16 plus 30 minus 17. So I spent $29. Yes, that's good. Nothing is in food for right now. We'll talk about that in a minute. I didn't spend anything in supplements. So that has 25 still in it. Yep, there you go, 25. For babies, I didn't spend any of Xerxes money, although I will be spending it soon, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and he needs a lot more. Um, Xerxes is starting to, to exhibit allergies. He's, his skin is itchy. He's biting at his paws. He's scratching out like puffs of his hair, so it's not good. So I did order him some stuff from Chewy.com. I'm waiting for it to come in. So I know I need a little bit more in pets. I need to remember that for next week. Okay. Um, extra has 10, 20, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 41, 41 dollars. And I started with 29. I added five. So that means I added another seven dollars. Remember, I take all of the ones from my variable and I put it in there. So if I did all of this right, I'm going to take that out and show you guys what I did. So I, I documented my rollover amount from last week. I had $136 total in all of my envelopes after I accounted for the extra $29 that I took out to put into debt. So I rolled that amount over. I budgeted $250 for all of these categories. And so you know that because that would be in your budgeted amount that's listed there. So 110 plus 30, 30. 40, 25, 10, and 5 equals $250, right? So I budgeted $250. Total amount spent, I should be able to add all of these together. Now, where I ran into a problem last week, I added all of these numbers together, but I forgot to do anything with this one because even last week it was an add. It, the spent was actually a plus and not a negative. So the way that I should do this now, if this works, I should add all of these minuses together to account for how much I spent, but I need to subtract the um, added added amount for the extra because that one gained money into its envelope. It didn't lose money out of the envelope. And that's the part I forgot last week. So one, 114 plus 31 plus 29 plus 51 minus seven, $218. Boom, look at that. 
what is my $218? Is this balance right, Lord? So 136 plus 250. This is why you always have to review because I might have fat fingered something equals 168. Hmm. Right. All right. One thirty six, two fifty minus two eighteen should leave one hundred and sixty eight dollars. And the way I'm, I'll know if that is right, my all of my balances, what's left over in each of the envelopes, should add up to this balance of one sixty eight. So I got one sixty eight. We're gonna subtract twenty three minus twenty three. We're gonna subtract forty seven minus forty seven. We're going to try, subtract 17, 17. We're going to subtract 25, minus 25. We're going to subtract 15, minus 15. Yes! And then we're going to subtract 41, minus 41, equals zero. Okay. <laughs> okay, we are there. All right, since I got that part right, I'm going to move on to this next part. So for groceries, we spent, oh, I could probably take that out, $114 minus $114. Gas is minus $31. Home is minus $29. Dining is minus $51. Supplements is minus zero. Pets minus zero. And extra was a plus seven. All right, and then we'll see how all, I don't know how these numbers are important, but they asked me to keep them, so I'm gonna keep them. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. That is everything for this week. So what'll happen is this weekly check-in, this and this, I'm gonna take out, okay? And this is what I was talking about before. So come on out a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna take I'm going to leave the month of August because I'm still working in August. I'm going to take out all of the stuff from this past week. Now that this has been reconciled and that week is done, I'm going to put that in the back of this section. So these are the weekly budget sheets that I've already gone through. So let's put that in the back. Okay. Next, I am going to pull out this week's budget that I'm working on. So this is the weekly budget, the bu cash envelope breakdown, which we'll talk about groceries and spending tracker for what I'm starting now. And I'm gonna move that here. So now that is right behind the monthly view. So month of August is here. This week that I'm gonna do a budget with me for on tomorrow is here. And now next week's. So weekly budget, cash envelope breakdown, Grocery meal plan and spending tracker is all together. And that moves here. So that when I'm ready to start prepping for the next week, I've already got that information there. And then this weekly check-in, because this goes for the whole month, that goes right behind my grocery list before my spending tracker. There you go, and that is in. All right, so we are set on that. Now, the only other thing I will cover with you guys is, um, I've been watching the Simple Budget um, videos, and one of the things that she talked about was using the money that you've unstuffed to stuff your next week, so that that limits the amount of times that you need to go to the bank. So, I unstuffed $100 for my city card um, extra debt payment. I unstuffed in cash $320 or something like that for um, for my cash unstuffing that I did. The cash unstuffing um, was a total of $407, but some of that money was already in the bank so that it was just easy for me to move it around online. The actual cash that I had was more like $300. So I took that $300, I took the $100 that I had for um, the extra debt payment. And I use that to determine my cash envelope breakdown for this next week that I have to do a budget with me for. So I have the same the amount. I wrote all of those in 
And then I started to look through all of that cash that I had, 400 bucks, to see if I had, how many 50s I had, 20s, 10s, 5s. And then I built my cash breakdown around that. So because I did that, I did not have to go to the bank. I actually took the money I was gonna pull to do my cash stuffing. I went ahead and made my Alley credit card payment. I kept the, kept the cash on hand, so that was one less trip that I needed to make, but I did have some money that was left over. So once I'd completed all of that moving and shaking and stuff, I had um, this money left over. Okay, so this is the money that was left over after I unstuffed my cash and stuffed for the next week. So I already had that cash pulled. Um, I had 20, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 34 dollars remaining, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do with this $34. I decided to go yesterday and get some food. It didn't feel like cooking. I was supposed to take this cash with me because I had enough in my buffer account to cover this cost. And it's my variable account, not my bills account. So I did not mark it as an un unbudgeted amount. It was just fluff money that I had left over in my variable account. A lot of times when I tell you guys that I put $800 in that account or $750 in that account, it's probably $20 more that I put in there and I just have that as a buffer. I had enough buffer to cover this $34 to make sure that I made a full payment of $407 on my Alley credit card. So we're good on that. But I was like, do I really wanna go to the bank and put $34 in? Nah. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and eat out. <laughs> so we did, but I forgot to take the cash with me. So we spent $25 at Wendy's to eat. So I'm gonna take this $25 and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the food envelope so that when I get ready to unstuff for the next week and I'm looking at that charge on my Alley credit card, the money is already accounted for here. So it was $25, so that's already done. So that leaves me with five, six, seven, eight, nine dollars. And in my personal wallet, I had two dollars left. There you go. I had two dollars left. So that gives me a total of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dollars. And I put this eleven dollars in my little bean envelope, which he already had a hundred and fourteen dollars. So when I add this eleven, that brings him to one twenty-five. Now it's almost time for me to do a cash condensing just because I don't like to have more than fifty dollars in any cash in any one envelope. 50, 70, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 5, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 125 dollars. I don't like to have more than 50 dollars cash in any one envelope and I know on some of these envelopes I have more than that so I, it's about time to do a cash condensing. I'm going to try and hold off until the end of August to get that done. All right, I think that is it. Uh, thanks everybody for your time. You guys have a good one.